Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well. We are now in part three of exploring SVGs for noobs, just like me. Um, one of the things that always confused me the most about SVGs was the view box, and that's what this video is all about. To understand the view box, we have to understand the viewport first. So we're going to be looking at what the viewport is, then we're going to look at understanding the view box. And it can all be kind of confusing and weird, even once you understand how it works. So at the end of the video, I'm going to look at one possible use case of playing around with the view box and why you might actually want to manipulate it and play around with it. So in my previous video, we looked at creating a really basic SVG, and all that was was my SVG. Uh, on here we had a circle with a radius on it. I'm just going to start with a radius of 50 on there and let's hit save. Uh, so we can see I have a circle there, but it's not actually contained, you know, we're not seeing the whole thing. And I briefly mentioned that we can move that around. Uh, so let's on here, give this a width of 100 and a height of 100. Um, and then on here, I'm going to give it a CX of 50 and a CY of 50, which is putting the center at the 50 and 50 of that 100, and it makes it so we can actually see our whole circle. Now to understand what's actually going on here is this is setting up my viewport, and the viewport is different from the view box. Um, and now, so this is far from a perfect example, but I'm actually going to jump into Photoshop to try and illustrate what's actually going on here, because showing you just with this can be really, really hard and just looking at the code. Um, so here in Photoshop, I have a really large canvas and on there I have a circle, but I can only see a little part of my circle because, well, that's what's in my current viewport. The viewport is the size of my window here in Photoshop. Um, so just for example, I can make my viewport smaller right now, or I can make my viewport larger by doing that. So it's changing the physical size of what I'm looking at on the screen. The physical part of what I see on my screen is my viewport. So even if I zoom out a little bit or zoom back in, my viewport's not changing. You can see this red box here is changing. That's not my viewport. The viewport is literally the size of what I see on my screen right now. I can pan around and move everything around. My viewport's not changing size. I'm just changing where my viewport is looking. And the same if I zoom out, I'm changing what I can see on my viewport, but I'm not actually changing the size of my viewport. So when we come and if I go back to my code now, um, so if we go like that, this is where I'm setting my viewport. I'm setting the size that I am looking at of this SVG. So when I go and I change the center of this and move it around there, that's the same in Photoshop. So if I come up and I take my move tool here and I move this, that's the same as moving it on the canvas. My viewport hasn't changed, my view box hasn't changed. All I've done is gone and moved this circle on my, uh, on my canvas that I'm working with. And the canvas in SVG, you have a canvas and it's effectively infinite. It just goes on forever. Um, and you can move your items around on that canvas. And then the viewport is what we can see on it. So to highlight it a little better and to mimic the example we have going on here right now, if I come back over to my code, um, let's make my SVG have a height of 200, a width of 300. We'll save that. We shouldn't see any changes right now. Um, and I'm just going to come on my SVG, SVG, and we'll give this a border. Three pixels solid red. So now we're sort of looking at our viewport. So this is our viewport into our SVG. This is what we're seeing in our SVG. So if I move my CX here to 100 instead of 50, we can see this stays the same, but it moves around in that space. And now it should move down. So we're moving things around inside of our SVG. And what happened is before, if this is too small, so if my height's only 100, my circle's there but I can't see it because my viewport's not large enough to see it on the canvas. And again, the canvas is infinite. It just goes infinite in all directions. So my, I could move my SVG's items around inside my viewport as much as possible or as much as I want to. Um, and it just depends on how my viewport is set up on whether or not I actually see them. Now already that's kind of weird, but then there's also the view box that comes in. So uh, actually on my SVG here, I'm gonna switch the width to here. Um, We'll go with the same thing, 300 pixels, 
and I'll give it a height of 300 too, actually, 300 pixels. And I'll take that off of here. In general, I know I did it in the, the previous video with the width and height on here. I prefer doing it on my uh, all in my CSS and even better would be to have a class on here. Because if you're using SVGs, you're probably uh, gonna have multiple of them so we can give them classes and control them separately. Now, when we add in a view box, usually you're gonna see something like this. View box is equal to, and then you see some numbers here. And the first two numbers are usually zero, zero. Almost all the time, that's what you're going to see. And then the second two numbers depend on the size. So for now, I'm actually gonna put 300, 300 to be using the same ones that we have here. Now, if I hit save, nothing should really change. It should look exactly the same. So I've set my view box to be the same as my uh, viewport. They're identical to each other right now, so everything looks the same. This is usually what you'll see. Now, whereas the viewport is the size of the viewable area, the view box controls what shows up inside of that viewable area. It's sort of giving us some zoom and panning options. Now, again, let me repeat that. Our viewport is the viewable area. So how big is my viewable area? The view box controls what is inside of that viewable area. So let's make a change here. I'm going to start looking at these first two numbers right here. And actually, before I do that, I'm just going to set it up so uh, my circle is the same size as my whole box here, because I think that a little bit easier. Uh, so 150, 150 should put it right in the middle and 150 here too. There we go. So my circle is filling up the whole space. So I'm going to come on my view box and I'm going to change this number to 100 and change this number to 100 and I'm going to hit save. And you can see that my circle is moved. That's kind of weird, right? These first two numbers are the starting coordinates of our view box. So by default, it's starting at the zero, zero. Let's go back over to Photoshop a bit to understand what's actually happening. Um, <clears throat> so while um, SVGs have an infinite canvas, Photoshop doesn't. So let's just pretend that the infinite canvas can't go into the negatives for now. So here is my zero, zero. And what we're effectively doing is setting us, ourselves up like this. So I have my circle that's right there. And my viewport, you can see my viewport here is right on the edge there. It's starting at the zero, zero. So what I did with my code was here when I'm doing 100, 100, is I'm actually telling it to move over 100 pixels this way and move over 100 pixels that way. So I've moved, so my viewport has the same dimensions. Nothing with my viewport has changed, but where the, view, where the viewport is starting is being affected now. So it's instead of starting at the zero, zero, like we were before, we're moving over and we're starting at the 100, 100 point. So we're losing out a little bit of our circle now, and that's why part of our circle is getting cut off. Now, this might seem like something that's really strange, but remember, at the end of this, I am going to come in and give a little hint on why, you know, useful cases for all of this and why it actually does make a little bit of sense. Um, so if we go back over to my code, um, so I did that. So I, I could also do it the other way. I can do negative numbers, negative 100, negative 100, and it's going to do the opposite. It's going to move me to the left and up. So we can move around um, like that. So it's keeping everything the same, but it's letting me move around. And let's just make my circle a bit smaller now for this next example of what we're gonna do. So these two numbers here, um, they're not the ending coordinates. Like this isn't the start and then the end. It's actually the width and the height. So what I'm saying is I want my view box to start at zero on the X and have a width of 300. And I want to have my Y have started zero and have a height of 300. So when I change these numbers, it effectively makes it zoom in and out. So if I make this 600 and 600, we're going to zoom out because what's happening is in this space, which is only 300, we're going to sort of cram in 600 units instead of 300. So if I hit save, it's effectively zoomed out by 50%. And if I switch this over to 150 and 150, it's going to zoom in on my circle. And I can actually take this circle and get it perfectly in the middle um, by moving everything over a little bit. I'm not sure if it'd be 75 or 150. I'm going to try with 75 because I think it'd be there. Yeah. 
Um, so now we can see that I've perfectly zoomed in on my circle and had it fill up the whole space. Whereas originally my circle had was only filling up half of the space. Um, so that is an option that you can do to move around and zoom in and out. So just to show the two differences, let's just jump back to Photoshop again. So remember one of them, the, the first two numbers are panning around. So it's moving this space around. My viewport's the same size, but it's moving things around. The other option, and I'm just gonna move this here, is zooming out and zooming in. Now remember, my viewport, this red box is getting bigger and smaller. So if I zoom in, that red box is getting smaller, but my viewport is the same size. The viewport isn't this red box. The viewport is this whole space right here. So if this was my original one, and then I did, I'm playing around with my width and the height of the view box, that's this red box here. If I make my view box smaller, it's gonna make the things inside look bigger. So let's do that again, we'll zoom in a bit. So you can see I'm making this red box smaller. I'm making the view box smaller, even though the viewport is staying the same size. So if we go and look back at the code, if these numbers are bigger, that means things are zooming out. And if these things are smaller, that means we're zooming in. So again, if I zoom out now, you can see that my view box is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. My viewport is always the same size. So I think it is an important distinction to make and understand. And just know that I'm putting 600 pixels here. So if I have 600 across here, this is gonna be smaller. If I go to 300 there, it's gonna come in and this is gonna get bigger. And if I make it down to 150, again, it just keeps zooming in and in. So this is getting smaller, even though this is staying the same. And it's a really strange concept and something that's a little bit weird to wrap your mind around. Now, as promised, I said I'd give you an example of where this might be used. I'm gonna, I have an SVG here that I've made, so I'm going to copy this and bring this in over here. And we'll just add the class is equal to example and just a few small little changes to make uh, on this the viewport right now or the view box right now is 00 300 100 and I exported this directly from Illustrator I haven't made any changes except these were IDs that I just switched to classes um, but what I'm gonna do is just make this so it's the same because it's easiest to work with when they're identical at least to start with so here we can see I have my view box and my viewport are both the same. Now, if ever you want to have a sprite system, so you want one SVG, but that one SVG has all of your icons in it, but you only wanna highlight one icon at a time. I personally find it hard to use and I don't really like building out a sprite system like this, just because you really need to be paying attention to how you set everything up and the positioning of things become really important, which personally I find it makes it a little bit harder to use. I'm gonna but that's okay. Uh, I still want to show you how a sprite system like this can be used. You might run into it in the real world. You might love this idea. And it also really illustrates why we might even care about what we're looking at right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch my width and my height to 100. Now you can see what's happened is it scaled my SVG down inside of that. I made it a 100 by 100 box, but automatically it's going to scale it down. If ever you don't want to scale something, you can use um, the preserve, at, I'm going to spell this wrong probably, aspect ratio is equal to none. Um, and you can see that actually stretches it, so it won't preserve the aspect ratios anymore. Um, it will do something like that. Um, there are other things you can do in here. You can use like a meat, a slice, and you can also set where it's sort of positioned on there using X min and Y min, but I'm not going to get too much into that because um, for this example, I think it's a bit of overkill. Uh, so let's just get rid of that because we don't need it for now. We don't want to stretch our things. Um, so here we have that set up like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, let's just grab our view box from here and throw it at the front so we can more easily play around with it. So on my view box here, um, I could change the numbers I have on here. So I could set this to 100, 100, and now I only am looking at my Twitter icon because I set up my Twitter icon to be inside the first 100 pixels. Each icon is 100 by 100 with a little bit of white space around it. 
So if I come and I change, now that I've zoomed in, remember this is my zooming. So if I go back to like this, we're zoomed out, I'm looking at all three icons. So this is gonna zoom in on one icon. And then these are what I can use to pan back and forth. So I can come onto this and I wanna move over 100 pixels. I can do 100 there. And now I see my uh, GitHub icon and then I can switch this over to 200 and hit save. And I've moved over to my code pen icon and back and forth very, very easily. So I can have one SVG and have as many icons in there as I want. Again, the only thing that this could become troublesome with is just having to know where your S, uh, each icon is positioned along uh, inside your SVG. So you can put in the right numbers here to get the icon that you need. Um, because this is inline and one of the advantages of things that are inline like we have seen before, uh, I could also come into here and say that Twitter has a fill of blue and that would change that one, but it's only changing my Twitter one. Obviously that's not the right blue. Um, but then if I went and moved over, the GitHub one is still black. Um, or, you know, if we go and look at all three of these. Whoops, wrong way. 300, 100, there we go. Um, you can control each one separately for colors and other stuff like that. Uh, if it is inline, but if it's not an inline SVG, if it's like uh, something you're bringing an external SVG, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's the view box in a nutshell. It is a weird property. It's probably not something you're used to, but just think of, again, the, this is setting up the dimensions of my what I'm looking at. And then this is controlling the first two control the position. So panning left, right, up and down. And then the second two numbers control the zoom and zooming in and zooming out. That's really the big thing to remember. And I hope that really does clear some things up because again, for me, the view box was really weird and confusing. It's still a strange concept, but now that I understand how it works, I feel a lot more confident when I'm using SVGs and making little changes to them and just knowing what's coming out of it and what this whole view box thing is and why these numbers are there and why if I changed them before, I didn't really know what was going on. So it's really useful, I found to really get it. If it's still not clear, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you have any questions other than that about SVGs, please let me know. I still have a lot more videos in this series that will be coming out. A lot of requests about different things. So please keep on leaving those down below. A big thank you once again to my patrons for helping support this video. And again, it was my patrons who decided on SVG as a topic. So thank you once again for that. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.